if you've got a modified car, there's a good chance you've dealt with or are dealing with overheating issues. All right, let's go out here and check this thermostat. I need to get this water up to temperature so that we can test and see if our thermostat works. Now this is a really good way to figure out if your thermostat is working or not. But for now, while this water is heating up, I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about like antifreeze and distilled water versus just regular tap water. When you're using regular tap water, you're gonna get minerals and deposits and things like that, which is gonna cause this thermostat to get sticky and not wanna work. Do you guys see that right there, that shiny spot? That's where this thing has been sliding up and down crooked. That's honestly perfectly normal. These things do that from time to time. That's just the way they work. But think of this. Antifreeze has properties in it to be able to lubricate things. That's gonna allow your thermostat to open and close like it should with less friction. Also, it's really good for your water pump. Now we're not gonna get into mixtures because that's highly debated, but just make sure that you do have some antifreeze in your car. So this is a 160 degree thermostat. So when that water gets up to temperature, 160 degrees, this should start to open. So let's go in here and grab a gauge. Now this isn't gonna be super scientific here, guys. I just wanna show you something. I wanna show you how this works. So right now we're roughly at about 138, 140 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and get our thermostat in here and see if this thing opens up yet. So we're just gonna lay it over here like that. And as you can see, we're at about 160 degrees. This thermostat should start opening up. Okay, so that's about as far as your thermostat actually opens. So not as much probably as you might think. All right, so let's go ahead and check and see what the temperature is. So 178, 180 degrees, something like that. Let's bring this inside. We'll let this cool off and see if it closes back up. So I'm just gonna take this out of the water and I'm gonna let you guys watch this thing cool off. Watch how it works. pretty much closed and this is what we're looking at pretty much on the spring is about 108 something like that so you can see that it takes a little while for this thing to work so why am I showing you that well it's just a really cool experiment it shows you whether or not your thermostat is working properly uh, it also shows you how long it takes for these things to actually work like they don't just open and close uh, I actually had the misconception as well of that. I thought, okay, when it gets to temperature, it opens, and then as soon as it cools down, it just closes. It, it doesn't really work that way. The temperatures in this thing, pretty much once that thermostat opens, it, it likes to stay open for a while. Like this thing's really got to cool down a lot before this thing closes back up. So, so if your thermostat starts to come up crooked and get hung up, which I have seen before, then there again, time for a new thermostat. So now that we've got my car running better, we're running into some heat issues. Uh, basically the car is just getting a little too hot for my liking a little too quick. Uh, it's, it's horrible, I know guys, but this is just header wrap wrapped around my crossover tube. So this is where all the heat comes in right here. It comes down this header, across, and back up into that header and into the turbo. Okay, that creates an extreme amount of heat under here. Also, that transfers over to this pipe. One of the things that you can do if you have a turbo car is come down here and wrap everything. Even if it's ceramic coated like this, just go ahead and wrap everything. Also on these cars, there's a factory air dam that comes down. Now that air dam, a lot of people don't understand what that thing's for. It's actually to divert and to deflect air up into your radiator it really does help cool i was on the phone with neo mustangs earlier today and we were talking about some of the issues with the car and that was the first thing that he brought up he was like does it have a deflector on it and as you can see it does not so that's something that we have to put back on this car if your car came with a deflector make sure that it stays on because it does help now obviously it does not help if you're just sitting still but when you're driving down the road it will on my car as you can see we have the radiator back here we have the condenser and then we have the intercooler Everything is sandwiched in there pretty tight. I tried to give us as much room as I could, but everything's in there pretty tight, especially up top. You can see that everything kind of rolls in on each other. So I think what I'm gonna do is take the condenser out because as of right this second, the uh, air conditioner does not work in the car. 
So until we get that sorted out, I'm just gonna pop this condenser out, which is a fairly easy job, and see if that'll help. Because these fans are only designed to really be pulling air through a radiator and possibly a condenser. Most cars have AC, so when they design these fans, they do understand that these two components more than likely will be together. But now we've added a third component, which is this intercooler. And trust me, this thing gets hot. It gets extremely hot, actually. So that's something that we have to take into account here. These fans may not be enough to pull air through all three of these. So we may just have to get rid of that. Now there's been a lot of guys have success running AC, turbo, all this type stuff. But you gotta remember, every car is different. Uh, the cubic inches, the placement of everything, it, how efficient is your radiator? Are your fans working optimally? The timing on this car can be an issue. The fact that we're running pump gas, E85 is gonna help you keep the temperatures down while pump gas is just gonna run normal. When you have a highly modified car with a bunch of hot components underneath it, like this turbo system right here, you're gonna get a lot of excess heat that normally wouldn't be there, meaning this car wasn't designed to handle that type of heat. Now, once you do things like that, you really need to evacuate heat. As you can tell, that's just a stock hood. All that heat rises up and it gets trapped underneath that hood and really doesn't have a good place to go. Sure, it comes out of little holes in the fender wells and things like that, but most of you have your fender liners in there, which is really gonna help kind of hold that air in there, that hot air. My car doesn't have those, so yeah, that's gonna help a little bit. But I noticed whenever we had the hood off of my car that it ran cooler. So what's that tell me? This car needs a cowl hood on it. So that's something that's gonna be on my list is some type of cowl hood. Now, a heat extractor hood is probably gonna be the best. And I guess one of the most well-known heat extractors is gonna be the 0304 Cobra style. So imagine all of this extra heat now, and you got this big downpipe that, that comes down here. Now mine is wrapped with a blanket, so that does help. Every component on this car, exhaust related, is now twice as hot as what it would be. So this video is basically just to remind you guys, it could be a combination of a lot of different things with your car if it's running hot. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have a blown head gasket. It doesn't mean that something is wrong with your car. But chances are you just have some extra components that are adding a lot of stress and a lot of heat to your cooling system as it is. So there's ways to combat that. Like we talked about before, that front air dam that goes under there, that deflector, really needs to stay on the car. Uh, mine needs to be on there. So I gotta get this thing back on. That'll help whenever you're driving. It's not gonna help you when you're sitting still, obviously. Uh, also, you need to check, make sure your radiator cap is functioning correctly. If that thing's not, you're gonna have all sorts of issues. So trust me, guys, that is definitely something to look into. It's pretty cheap. You can run an auto parts store, grab yourself another one, slap it on, might fix your problem. If you've crammed and packed everything in so tightly around your radiator, then there's a good chance it's not gonna flow air through there. So all of these different things matter, right? It's a compounding effect. This adds a couple degrees, this adds a couple of degrees, and next thing you know, you're cruising around at 205, 206 degrees, and you really shouldn't be. Also, don't think that just because you put a 160 degree thermostat in your car, that it's going to run 160 degrees. That's not what these things do. They just open at a certain temperature. You're gonna have a spike past that 160, where everything starts to kind of cool back down and all that nice cool water from your radiator gets circulated back through. But that doesn't mean your car is gonna run at 160 degrees. As a matter of fact, I hope your car doesn't run at 160 degrees because they weren't designed to do that. Anyway, I wanna show you guys a really cool trick. You can tell if your car is moving enough air or not. So if you're curious to know, do I have enough fan, right? Is my fan strong enough to pull air through everything like it needs to? A good test that you can do is take like a dollar bill or something like that. I'm broke, so I have toilet paper. But you would just put it up here in front of whatever you have. I have an intercooler. If you don't have that, put it up there in front of your condenser and see if it sucks it into the radiator or the intercooler or whatever you've got up there. If it sucks it up there and holds it, chances are that's at least enough airflow uh, to not be horrible anyway. All right, let's go up here. I know this is a long video and you guys are like, I don't wanna hear about cooling stuff. But hey, this is stuff that we need to cover because not everybody knows so let's walk up here and look at the retro fox real quick because it's it's a little different it has a different setup it's all stock underneath the hood so we have an actual clutch fan on that car and you know what that's not a bad thing So 
So as you can see, this is a completely different setup with this car. One of the things I want to talk about is these fans, they should have a little bit of tension on them, right? So check and make sure your fan just isn't completely free spinning. Make sure it's got some tension on it. Also your overflow tank, make sure that it's operable. It's not busted because this thing does use that tank as well. Anyway, guys, these are some of the different things that you might run into if you're having cooling issues with your car. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead, wrap this video up. I hope it helps somebody. And as always, thanks for watching.